Good morning. Welcome students. This is HTM 111. Our lesson for today is about the menu. The menu is primarily a selling aid originally the bill of fare in English or menu in French. It was not presented at the table. Banquets generally consisted of two courses and each made up of a variety of dishes, anything from 10 to 40 in number. The first set of dishes were placed on a table before the diners entered, hence the word entree. That means before the diners entered or the entry. And when consumed, these dishes were removed or leave by another set of dishes, hence the words relieves or removes in French. So there is a so-called classic menu sequence, and over the last 100 or so years, the sequence of the European menu has taken on a classical format or order of dishes. This format is used to lay out menus as well as to indicate the order of the various courses, although the actual number of courses on a menu and dishes within each course will depend on the size and class of the establishment, most follow the classic sequence. So you already know the sequence of service in the FNB operation, services operation. So I will show you here the classical menu sequence. So there are actually 17. In this presentation, you will see here the classic menu sequence are as follows. In following order, orders, there are actually French terms here. Second is soup or the potage, egg dishes, the os, pasta and rice, the farinou, Fish, Poisson, Entree, Sorbet, Relief, Roast, Roti, Vegetables, Leans, Salad, Cold Buffet or Buffet Froid, Cheese or Fromage, Sweets or Entremets, Savory or Savoru, Fruit, Dessert, and Beverages. These are the classic menu sequence. However, a number of courses are often now grouped together. At its most simple, this might comprise starters, courses from 1 to 4, main courses, courses 5, 6, and 8 to 12. The afters are the courses 13 to 16, and then lastly is the beverages, following the classic menu sequence. We also have classes of menu. In your past bridging program or subject, you already know the classes of menu. So menus may be divided into two classes, traditionally called a la carte from the card and table dot or table of the host. The key difference between these two is that the a la carte menu has dishes separately priced, whereas the table dot menu has an inclusive price either for the whole meal or for a specified number of courses, for example, any two or any four courses. There are, however, usually choices within each course. The key characteristics of the table dot menu are the menu has a fixed number of courses, there is a limited choice within each course, the selling price is fixed, and the food is usually available at a set time. The key characteristics of the a la carte menu are the choice is generally more extensive, each dish is priced separately, there may be longer waiting times as some dishes are cooked or finished to order. So an example of the a la carte menu is those boards that you, you see in restaurants that are individually priced. And for the table dot, those menu with set price. So in the presentation, I have provided you also an example of menu du ju or cat du ju. And then we have the fix menu. And we also have sample tasting menu or the degustation menu. Going into the influences of the menu, number one, health and eating. Customers are increasingly looking for the availability of choices that will enable them to achieve a balanced diet. As we all know, we are now living in a pandemic season and it is imperative that we only eat healthy food, and also consume healthy drinks. Customers are also requiring more specific information on methods of cooking and ingredients used to produce their meals, such as low-fat milk, less sugar drink, as well as organic sources. The second influence is on dietary requirements. 
Customers may therefore require a certain diet for medical reasons. Some may need to know about the ingredients used in a dish. For example, people with allergies, diabetes, low cholesterol, and low sodium or salt. For this to be served properly to this specific type of people, you need to understand some of the dietary requirements for allergies. So the items that are known to cause allergies include the gluten in weight, rye and barley, peanuts, sesame seeds, and other nuts such as cashew, pecan, and walnuts, as well as milk, fish, shellfish, and eggs. It can cause anaphylactic shock resulting in lips, tongue, or throat swelling dramatically over a very short period of time. For the diabetic, refers to the inability of the body to control the level of insulin within the blood. Avoidance of dishes with a high sugar content. For low cholesterol, diets will include limited quantities of animal fats. Other items eaten may include grilled fish or meat, fruits and vegetables, low-fat milk, and yogurt. For low sodium and salt, reduction in the amount of sodium or salt consumed. Going to number three, cultural and religious dietary influences. Various faiths have differing requirements with regard to the ingredients that may be consumed, cover preparation methods, cooking procedures, and equipment used. We have here an example of religious groups. We have Hindus, Jews, Muslims, Sikhs, Rastafarians, and Roman Catholics. For the Hindus, they do not eat beef and rarely pork. Some will not eat any meats, fish, or eggs, and diets may include milk and vegetarian dishes. For the Jews, the country of Israel, they do not eat pork or pork products, shellfish, or animal fats and gelatin from beasts considered to be unclean or not slaughtered according to the prescribed manner of kosher or clean. Muslims will not eat meat, the fowl, or animal fat unless it is halal meat will not consume the alcohol even used in cooking because it is considered haram. Sikhs do not eat beef or pork. Some will keep to a vegetarian diet. For the rest of Aryans, it will not eat any processed foods, pork or fish without fins, example eels, and will not consume tea, coffee, or alcohol. For the Roman Catholics, you should not eat meats on Ash Wednesday or Good Friday or during the Lenten seasons. Some of them not eat meat on Friday. Going to number four, vegetarianism. It may derive from cultural, religious, moral, ethical, or physiological considerations. Some of you might be vegetarian and loves to eat only vegetables and fruits or consume organic resources. We have here vegetarian semi, vegetarians lacto ovo, vegetarians lacto, vegans, and vegetarians. For the vegetarian semi, they do not eat red meats or all meats, and diet will may include fish, poultry, and dairy products. For the vegetarians, lacto ovo, they do not eat meat, fish, or poultry, but may eat milk, milk products, and eggs. For vegetarians, lacto, they do not eat meat, fish, and eggs, but may eat milk and milk products or dairy products. For vegans, they do not eat any foods or animal origin, and their only diet only consists of vegetables, vegetable oils, cereals, nuts, fruits, and seeds. And for vegetarians, diet may include mainly raw fruits and dried fruits, nuts, honey, and olive oil. Lastly, on ethical influences, customers have become increasingly aware of ethical issues, such as ensuring sustainability of foods consumed, fair trade, the acceptability of genetically modified foods or irradiated foods, reducing food packaging and food waste, and reducing the effects that food production and food transportation have on the environment generally. So the people nowadays are looking into ways on how to conserve the environment while consuming raw materials or resources from the environment also. So we are going to sustain the environment that we are getting our raw resources from in which uh, we can still make another food varieties in the future for the newer generation. This is the end of the presentation. I hope you enjoy and learn. I'll be leaving you with a quote that a person who is nice to you but rude to the waiter is not a nice person. Thank you.